know about relationships, but you're wrong. Listen, there's no magic bullet. I'm teaching life skills. Yeah. When you sick, you need medicine. It don't always taste good. Oh, nah. But it'll get you better. You, you, you need this medicine. Yeah. It ain't gonna always taste good. But this is what you need. Men and women, bottom line, we need to have the conversation. Your partner wants to give up control, but only if you know how to drive. This is about being the best you you could ever be, whoever you are. I don't care if you're a man, a woman, LGBTQ, space alien. I'll save anybody. I don't care. I'll teach a hedgehog how to have a threesome. What do you mean by that? Look, you don't have to listen to me, but you're wrong. Listen, I know I'm great. And I know you're thinking, Dante, there's no way I could be like you. But you could be me, you know why? Because you know who I was before I was me? I was you. you. Man school, 202. Better hear what I've got to say because you won't get it again. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. What's up, y'all? GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited. Nice. I don't know if you know this, Harry, but this is a special show. Wow, finally. Yeah, finally. Now, I know I might have said that 500 times before, but this time I mean oh, it. Okay. We got a special guest in the building, bro. I, 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 it's good to be back in the studio. I'm feeling the energy. How are you doing? I'm doing, I'm doing great. Yes. Yeah, I'm having a tough time keeping these gators down. Dip Difficult. Yeah. Pimping ain't easy. They, they don't tell you that. But it gets better when you That's practice. That's true. That's all. That's true. Um, I don't know why I sound like a Spanish, like a DJ. See? Si. See? Si. See? Si. Pero, pero, pero you don't know? So, um, you want to do the honors? Oh, then, why uh, not? This is a, a guest that, uh, in a lot of our listeners, legendary status because yeah. of uh, some stuff she's done back in the day. Yeah. Uh, the intelligent, the beautiful, the fantastic, Dr. Victoria Zadrak, oh, a.k.a. Right. Dr. Z. Very Dr. Z, good. I like Dr. Zadrak. Dr. Zadrak. Yes. Uh, I like that. I will finish you. Oh, yeah. Um, she does like. She does seem like one of the sexier James Bond villains. Like I the would, one where like Famke Janssen would put her uh, legs and squeeze you with a, with just her thighs. Yeah, that's I, I feel like Doctor Z would do. Yeah. Totally do it. Yeah. I'm a workout fanatic. Uh, and I work on my thighs a lot. Wow, so sounds good. like a. Um, I'm good now. I'm there at, you go. That helped me get well, through. Put, the show. put that on your TikTok channel. I think uh, yeah. it'll pick up the new TikTok channel <laughs> for everything. Uh, uh, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for doing it. Um, we're glad to have you here. We took a little time to set everything up. We did, yeah. Dr. Zadrak has such big, pretty eyes. Mm. We had to use two cameras to take one camera per eye. So um, big doe eyes. I feel like Bambi's in the building. You know what I mean? It's just yeah. like crazy. But... Um, uh, It'd be hard to do therapy with Dr. Z with those eyes. Because you're supposed to make eye contact. real easy. That's true. Or real easy. Well, I usually wear, look, I wear no makeup, and I wear my hair up, and my little glasses. Yeah, that just, like, that sounds like a freaky uh, uh, psychiatrist fantasy right there. (laughs) Just just with the glasses, and then you, you know, you pull the pencil out, and the hair drops. You're like, ah, this works for me. Well, as long as they come in, who cares why they come in, right? That's what motivates them? F- fair enough. You know, fair enough. Like Woody Allen said, 99% of success in life is just showing up. Uh, absolutely. So gotta show up. Absolutely. We were talking about that earlier, just, you know, sticking to yeah. sticking to things and doing stuff. Uh, PhD, uh, this was a uh, playmate, uh, just extensive, just sticking to things. Three kids. Um... Um, and just really dope, just really well rounded. I mean, um, I'm a, I'm a, and you know, like did some, some like less, less, uh, like some soft porn stuff. But I'm, I'm always. Um, you did some soft porn? No, no, no. Oh, okay. I, well, I, like, I mean, I did a, love, a couple of live sex acts. I'll tell you that. Right? Okay, that's live. I mean, yeah, that's true. Somebody didn't show up, and they were Sorry, like, hey. well. <laughs> somebody didn't show up. And like, we don't have a dick. Can we? Can, can somebody please fuck this woman on is stage? There a, is there a cock in the house? Anybody? And I was like, I raised my hand. I'm like, yeah, I, I guess I could do that. Uh, 
Back in my old days, I wouldn't do that now, but... Yeah, I've done all, pretty much everything over the years. Remember, yeah. I have a very expensive education, a DG and a PhD, and I always tell people, how do you think I paid for it? Right, right. Yeah. I did regular modeling. I did the usual strawberries and clothier catalogs and clover and whatever else, but I also did Playboy and Penthouse. Mm -hmm. and I, yeah, Doc, so it's so amazing to have you here and, and the, the, the perspective, all the different perspectives and all the things that you've done. And I know you're doing you're doing a lot of Zoom stuff and Zoom therapy, um, and you know, off off air we were talking about the the um, the execution of masculinity, you know, real honest masculinity, and 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 that's kind of what the show is about. That's what our show is about. Is trying to can you speak on that a little bit more, like what your experience is? Or? Yeah, I just feel like a lot of women these days feel like um, you know there's just the men have been emasculated whether it's by you know the culture social media who knows uh, fetoestrogens in the air uh, and so it's i think a lot of women are kind of looking for old-fashioned chivalry yeah. like i you know and and again like i talk to women they say well he says it's too far for him to drive an hour and I tell people, look, uh, you know, a hundred year war was fought over Helen of Troy, yeah, and yeah. it's too far for you to drive yeah, one hour yeah. to meet a woman of your dreams. Yeah. So there is that sort of, you know, I think women are, you know, they're missing that kind of a old fashioned, you know, chivalrous male who will go out of his way to court a woman to pursue now, her. Do you, to do you think it's, I mean, you, you call it chivalrous. I mean, do you, think, you really think it's chivalrous or do you think it's more of uh so so like, goal oriented i think yeah so, well goal, i also because like my dad my dad you know i grew up with my dad he was a he was a guy guy he was like a you know his job was like he was a laborer you know right. and and uh but i mean it, it wasn't like if he didn't want to do something he just didn't do it but i think he he also wouldn't say oh, it's too far to drive. You, do you do you understand what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. What I mean is that I think you know, like women miss men pursuing them, and they want right. someone who puts in some effort, and and there is some courtship, and there is some, but also someone who is who is uh, passionate. There right. is the passion. There is the somebody who's goal oriented. Uh, it, it like a lot of women tell me they're like, well, it seems like I'm always in control. He always wants me to be in control. He wants me to make all the decisions. Like you never know, you know. I have to make a decision. You know, I have to plan the whole date where right. we go for dinner. Yeah. So I yeah. think women. Are, I don't know like, what do you want to do. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's really pretty much the response. But I also, think women I want to it, take charge, guys. Is right. it also that uh, because we're trying to make sure women have a say in things as well that we've overcorrected to some degree where we're yeah. want to make sure the woman's you know for a while for a long time women's opinions didn't matter in this right. society and we're trying to overcompensate by going well, what do you think what do you want exactly want to make sure you're happy. But, but I think, they want but you to make a decision. I think most women want a, a confident, and decisive guy. It, yeah. it doesn't mean the one who doesn't care, obviously, who takes her interest in account, but the one who will plan, who will execute, who will take charge, who will surprise her, who doesn't have to. They don't want psychophants. They don't want uh, like ingratiating, groveling male who you know is constantly apologizing, is constantly making sure everything's okay. I think someone who takes charge. I think women still want a guy who can take control and I think that's you don't see a lot of it I think mm. you know everybody's sort of like a daisical and, and like you know, back I, always, and I always said that you can't you can't fuck your woman right if if you like her too much well you, there's a point to you that you know I mean or if you're and, scared and, right if you and I don't mean mm. attracted to her but what I'm saying if you're uh, is it is it too right. hot in here? Do you you want water? You know, uh, like you. But but I think the nature of that is is the fact. I think that comes from the fact that women have been, uh, women have been saying that this is what I want. I I even think that there's this this idea of this communication thing, that where it's like like men are communicating too much. They're telling too much of their feelings, and it's, they're putting it all out there because this is what they're told to do. But I, you can't, you know. But I, I think also a woman wants to know that you get it, where you, you're picking up the cues. I think the key is a lot of listening. I think women sure. want a guy who listens a lot, reflects their emotion, not necessarily the one who is constantly whining about his emotions. Right, right. I think that's she, this this idea of communicating right. too much. 
Yeah, so I think she wants a calm in the storms. Cause mm -hmm. we, you know, women are more emotional because of hormones, because our brains are different. But so she wants a guy who can listen. A good listener is always right. sexy. Right. Uh, you know, that's the key. Just kind of calmly reflect her emotion, and and ne when necessary, take charge. Right. right. I think women are tired of always being in control, and that's yeah. how we feel now. So how do you reconcile that with sort of the idea? Because there is the feminist movement, which does have to exist for a legitimate reason. Um, how do you reconcile that with women who are saying, like, that's not what we want, ultimately? There are women out there going, no, I want an equal partner in this relationship. I want or I that, want this toxic masculinity. I don't want any toxic masculinity. But I think there's a contradic yeah. it's a contradiction, but I think, I, I really think that what has happened, because I, I think that women, for, for the most part, have been taken advantage of. And like it, So, and I'd like to know what you think about it. A lot of times the guys who are most confident, what I find the guys who are most confident, that women find the most attractive, when they're that confident and they're, a lot of time they're, they become, they teeter on abusive. Do you know what I mean? That's a t it's a tough balance. You know, yeah. you want confident, you want maybe a little bit cocky, but you want caring. Right. Exactly. So it's confident by caring, right? And a lot of times the guys try to be so confident it comes across as callous. You're a dick. Yeah. So you're callous. Yeah, nobody wants a yeah. narcissist, a callous, right. like somebody who just, you know. So, yeah, it's. I think confidence is the key. It's like kind of calm, calm confidence. You know, the word I always use, I find that women find most attractive, unaffected. Yes, which that, is equanimity. Yeah, that you Somebody's unaffected by the surroundings. Nonchalant, exactly. Yeah, like everything's everything's going to be fine. Just exactly. relax. I, I've never, in, in a situation like, I, and I, I, I use this example, like when, when I would date, and they, where are we going? Just relax. Yeah, exactly. I, 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 I'll take care of it. Where are we going? And, and what you find is this, it's almost this kind of girl-like childness come where they'll sit in the car, fold their legs in the car and look out, you know what I'm saying? And that, and they get to kind of be this little princess, this little exactly, girl yeah. thing, which is what, what they find most attractive. But the balance of that, you know, I, I, I always... It's a lot of pressure. Well, well, I think also... You know, people don't, women don't mind you driving as long as you have proven to them that you're capable of driving. And capable of taking some direction if you're totally lost. Right, right, right. All right. Well, I mean, I think that there's, there's, a, there's an honesty. I, I think that that's yeah. so, so, you know. I the, love when the guy drives. Yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, especially in this traffic. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Please. Yeah, the, um, you know, even, you know, that the truthfulness of understanding, go, look, I don't know this, so I'm trying to figure this out, if you can give me a hand on this, and, and being com confident enough to ask yes, right. this, if if this is something you know about, I mean, I, I, I uh, I'm, I'm, I've always been very open to learn from anybody, no matter who it is and whatever, because I, I can't, I, I, you know, the, the, the ability to... The, 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 the expectation for you, you to know everything is just absurd. Exactly. Um, and so, and the, and the fact that some that your woman might have some expertise that you don't have, and your rec your confidence of you being able to recognize that that is the case, I think she finds that she feels empowered and and validated, and where she still feels like she doesn't have to be in control. Right. Exactly. But also, I think the key, like. People talk about equality, but equality doesn't mean sameness. Right. You could be different. Different and equal, like and apples and could, oranges. Right, yeah. exactly. And then yeah. and that's what's called complementary difference. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be same. Equality is not about sameness. And there's, you know, fundamentally male and female brain is different. Yeah. And uh, one of the main things is that women have a very thick corpus callosum it's the part that connects the two hemisphere right so we all know this their yeah, messages this. This is common knowledge their messages well, we've we've talked we've about talked about this. Right. i mean we've talked no, about I mean, yeah, this yeah, yeah. the different it's a very different brain yeah. so we have a hard time compartmentalizing stuff we get right. overwhelmed with emotions we right. get you know a lot of messages are crossing back and forth Men have a different brain. They're able to compartmentalize it and put it away. And sometimes it's maddening for women, right? Because how could you not think of this? How could you not ignore it? But th we, but as long as people realize it and take advantage of the different types of brain. Mm -hmm. And so that's why men are capable to be less emotional. And right. it's okay to be less emotional. Right. But, um, how do you... How do you rectify that when there's this, the feminist movement is saying we're the same, where there's no difference in gender? I mean, how do you rectify that? Because what you're talking about is just a scientific fact. It's a scientific, and it's a scientific fact that testosterone changes the brain sure. entirely. Absolutely. Changes the, the 
type of thought, the type of, I mean, it, you notice that if, like, for instance, in hypogonadal males, so males with the test, you know, one testicle is smaller than the other, they, and when they supplement testosterone, their, their behavior changes, their drive, their... So, so because one testicle is one small, I'm, I'm not sure, yeah, explain so, that so to me. Yeah, so some men, like, they, if they have low testosterone, uh, these experiments were done on what's called hypogonadal males. Mm -hmm. If you, the testosterone supplementation makes a huge difference for behavior and thought. So you can't say we are different as male and as men but and women. But you're saying that, that is, that is evident by the different size of the testicle. Testicles. Well, I don't know how exactly they measure it, honestly. Okay. I just okay. know that one doesn't produce as much testosterone. But when okay. testosterone is supplemented, the, the type of thought becomes different. They become more uh, driven, more energy. Uh, I mean, so you can't you can't argue against the fact that biologically we're different. But right. so, but it's it's not about superiority. It's right. about again complementary. It's understanding the the, the, the the organism as a unit. Right. And and what's what's really interesting about that, I have a friend of mine who's who's who is a trans woman now right. and so she did the testosterone therapy. Right. And one of the things that she said to me, she's she she literally was like well I am I'm, I'm sorry. Uh it's a it's she's a trans man man right it's, yeah, she's yeah, a trans yeah. man so changing so, into a man so she yeah. she, she uh so, it, so she he, had to test it yeah, yeah right he right so he, he uh he is testosterone was taking the testosterone therapy right and the on an honest level she was like is this what it's like to walk around like you yeah, all the time like i'm looking at fat asses and titties and, yeah. and it's it you know so you just but i i think also i think what the problem is is Anytime there's a um, this kind of revolutionary thing, like where the whole Me Too movement, where the pendulum always swings way too far, right. and then it swings back, and then it still has to find that that mid ground, and right. I think it's we're still kind of and, finding that. And a lot of women will tell you we we want the guy to open the door without right. being afraid that his elbow will touch, right? You know, and a lot of guys want to open a door for a girl because right. they think, well, maybe I accidentally touch her and she'll find it inappropriate. Right. Meaning we we like it's gone so far that men are afraid to make any move yeah. at all. And yeah. You know what? And you walk down the street, and guess what? I like it when men whistle. Yeah. And I don't I don't find it offensive. Yeah. And I don't know how many women really do. Right. And I well, tell I might find it offensive if the guy is overly aggressive or he's it, unattractive. But so if, it's, if it's just look, it's a compliment yeah. Yeah. again, and that's yeah. and that's because men think differently. They notice their they their they the their sexuality. brain notices yeah. that sexuality yeah. and. So I always tell women like enjoy because I think you're gonna miss it when they stop. Yeah, and they so. and they do stop. And it, it, I have a, I have a sister that's 77, yeah. and uh, I talk about this. So she is the worst bitch ever. But uh, the <laughs> but she's literally which is why you're gonna put on her tombstone. Yeah, it, yeah. I already got the tombstone yeah, picked yeah. up. But she literally she's gonna she's gonna die alone and. Uh, what did she have a lot of suitors back in the day? Oh, she was yeah, but me, big, big ass but titties. Me. She, you know, big ass titties, pretty legs, six inch heels, but you know, was you know was abusive, very abusive, and then because she had options, right? Because she had options, and then as and now nobody is whistling, and you know the content. Just the, the basic social contact that she's striving for now, right. where she's just not, it's not, you know, and then because she's really not a good person in the first place, nobody, you know, nobody wants to deal with that, ever, especially not if you, you're this old ugly broad. Now, the, the, nobody really, we really don't give a fuck about you, you know. Right, right. But I mean, look, and I tell women all the time, you can't get offended that men are like, look, that's, they're designed evolutionarily to look. Right. And they can't help themselves, and their brain, uh, you know, they they may get just because they're looking doesn't mean they're they're gonna cheat on you. Right. That's what women think. They think, oh, he looks like me. Yeah. No, those are completely different things. Men right. appreciate me; they may even get turned on. But but in terms of attachment, if it's a true attachment, true love, that that doesn't mean that sure. checking out another woman. Sure. Uh, it's going to translate into infidelity. You will. I mean, I think so. It, that also has to do with his personal insecurity in the first place. So if he's super insecurity, these conquests become important because of the fact that the conquests uh, validate his manhood. But yeah. but if you're dealing with that, 
anyway there's probably a whole bunch of other stuff that's going on anyway yeah. underneath that that you that where's it there's a uh a subtext to that kind of relationship in the first place where there's other problems that are going right. on. Um, I Do you think... But I think ultimately men and women seek the same thing. They seek sure. love and belonging and understanding. Sure, sure. And, uh, you know, I think, yes, they, they maybe men initially, they maybe there is more of sexual thrill component, but I think in a relationship where there is that foundation of love and attachment and a good you know a good open-minded sex life right. I, I don't think pe men are necessarily going to cheat um, well, i don't so, i don't agree i agree yeah. i think but you because you don't really you don't really understand uh great sex until there's an intimacy right and there's an intimacy element and you can have you know like me personally when i was running around running around like a hoe and i was stripping and yeah. whatever you know yeah that was all great but the intimacy is like when you like somebody and you want to please them and you're right. and you you're connected and, and and it's yeah. it's a whole different level yeah uh, and yeah. yeah and so it's born out the sex is born out by by that desire for connection right but it also t it comes you know it's natural for young people to want thrill for men and women yeah. i think they're still learning it's still yeah, that's a useful thing. it's a useful thing yeah and but but eventually i think you know men and women ultimately want the same goal they right. want they want the belonging how long do you think be, be, okay so we have this kind of referendum this me too referendum that yeah. it's gone where the pendulum is swung all the way back i i i find that like for instance, uh, you know, uh, you know the whole Matt Lauer case where he had this button where he was locking girls in the room and then making them suck his dick or whatever it was going. Yeah. Um, the I had a friend of mine who said, "Look, what did, what did the Me Too movement?" I and I was saying to him, I said, "You don't understand. As an executive, you can't call the locksmith. You can't have that button put in anymore. Right? right Do you know right. what I mean? It's it's if you even tried. Right, right. So so even if people don't." necessarily agree with whatever has the changes that have happened the changes have happened and there's consequences to this kind of abuse and this kind of toxic kind of abuse that people but i also say me and harry say this all the time <coughs> a guy like harvey weinstein who hmm. is sexually abusive was a shitty boss to everybody he just didn't have a there wasn't a sexual energy to how he treated the men but he was fucking the men too oh you're right it, so it's, he it's, was it's as all about abusive, power yeah. The, yeah. the thing is that's you know i know it's sexualized but that is about power i'm sure yeah. everybody was like you said everybody was was suffering and right, working right. for him it just, this wasn't a sexual it just element. wasn't sexual how long do you think before the pendulum swings back to the center since now of you know you had this whole me too thing mm -hmm. and you had this and now it's kind of a little more quiet but how long you think it'll be before women can speak about these things that i do want a guy to open the door i do want a guy to take charge i do how long you think that well, how far think, is that off I, look i think it's like anything in terms of there's always an idea that comes around and then there is a, a, a counter idea right in fact that's the, the the whole philosophy is based on thesis and antithesis and right. what happens eventually is synthesis right so somewhere in between there is a balance that results from that. Like, you know, there is the communism and then there is a capitalism and some and people realize, well, you know, we have to find something. There's a balance. There's uh, something we in between that. You know, we can't have the government tell us everything what to do, but we also don't want the government to give a fuck what, right. at all. Right, right, so right. So somewhere there has to be a balance, right? right? Not like this predatory capitalism and not... Right, not, not, not the political, not state, complete yeah. socialism, not no. complete right. communism. Some, some, something where something yeah. different with a mix of all, all of it. Three. Right. So, so it's the same thing, I think, with the whole feminism. Yes, the for from for so many years, women didn't, they couldn't vote, they couldn't right. own property, you know, they didn't have anything. So, and the men did take advantage but remember like in, in ancient greece they took advantage, advantage of little boys right, too so right. i mean there's been like like i said men like men in power took advantage of whoever right. uh, for many many years powerful so, men have always taken well, have yeah. taken advantage of powerful so, people so exactly so men women whoever came along so so we're getting to the point where you know people are asserting themselves on people who are underdogs are asserting themselves right. but yes there'll some ways there'll be a balance eventually yeah. Yeah. i i came to know you from the opie and anthony show sure, back yeah. in the day uh, probably at this point over 15 years yeah. ago or whatever so that's how i came to know you I'm, and the, the appearances with patrice and all that my 
my question for you is is how have things changed because it's you know uh it doesn't seem like that long ago to me and yet i feel like the landscape of sex and dating has changed a lot in that time frame yeah. like how in, from your perspective how has it changed what is the biggest change you've seen you know what? Like I think, I think now I think you know there was this whole movement of those pickup artists. Remember yeah. that was yeah. really big. Yeah, yeah that's and all right. That. And it's yeah. still going on too, and it's 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 all these tricks. And I it's, tell people it's, it's not about shit. tricks. Yeah. And maybe yeah. there's some women who are going to fall for them every, every every once in a while. But ultimately, we want genuine and authentic. Right. We, we don't want someone. And women see through all those stupid games. Well, I, the I confidence mean, is still important, and, and the humor is still important, but. But again, it has to it has to come from being authentic and genuine, not this contrived tricks and contrived approaches. Yeah. And, well, so. you, you know what's interesting about that is is the techniques work. Those techniques do work because they're 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 really built in science. They're based in science. Yeah. You know, neurolinguistics, programming, and yeah, all of this yeah. stuff. But the problem with that is. There is a you can't um, sustain a whole relationship exactly. I tell, on I tell just people, tricks. Any, I said anybody can get a hot woman. Can you keep a hot woman? Well, you know, like it's, I mean, it's not that it, hard to let, really. Well, it it is hard in a lot of cases to for a lot of uh, for a lot of men. It's even they can't even get to that point. But but I would say is that if you do, um, like one of the things that I think is a woman's superpower is um, is her. The intuitive, their intuitive yes, ability to, intuitive. To, to, to be truthful, to, to seek out truth. The, the, exactly. Yeah. So the authenticity of this whole thing. It's also yeah. because I think it's also a genetic component because of the fact that being the physically weaker, uh, uh, you know, human. Evolutionary. Ev- evolutionary. That yeah. you, you cannot, you cannot. If somebody's a creep and they mean you physical harm, yes. you have to be able to see that before yeah. you're in. So, the, yeah, before you're a tied radar up is the, always you know. seeking to see how authentic someone is. Right. Exactly, and so, that that in itself is something that is is a genetic component from two hundred thousand exactly. years of human beings developing DNA and so on just through survival. What's interesting about that is that if you get the pickup on, you get say if you're a great pickup on and you learn all the te- yeah, you can get the woman. The problem is she'll have sex with you and then she has buyer's remorse and now she resents you right. because you've been so inauthentic and But I think the other thing is you're doing all these tricks but you're not working on yourself, so your real self will eventually shine yes, through. Yes, absolutely because yeah. you haven't been so, working on yourself and that's the the authenticity of that. But the but the the, the real thing is the buyer's remorse. Yeah. And this is what I so I'll, I'll get a lot of guys will consult with me and and a lot of times they'll have a they'll have a pickup artist background. I can always tell because of the language they use. Well, because they're wearing a top hat when they call you. Well, too. Yeah, that, that, and, and goggles. And goggles. And they're, and they're talking about uh, IOAs and they try to do ma- of interest. Yeah. And like, they, do you want to see a magic trick, Dante? Yeah. Like, no, man. I, no, I'm, I'm good. Wanna, let's just do this. Um, and, and but what really happens is, especially in the climate of what where we are now, where women women can speak up about this kind of abuse. Now you have you have basically lied about who you are, and now and and then she has sex with you, and then she has this buyer remorse because she feels tricked. Right. And now she's angry at you because of the fact that you tricked her. Now you could be in a real funky place because now she's mad at you because you lied about it. And then she goes with this, I don't know how I feel about this sexual exchange. It felt awkward. And now you're in a shitload of, because you were dishonest in the first place. Right. And so that authenticity is something that I I constantly talk about. Me too. Yeah, absolutely. It's very important. So it comes from, it comes from being an interesting person right. so I tell people like develop your interests right you know whatever it is be, if you're an interesting person it'll come across now how because I have I have an answer to that but how when you say be an interesting person that seems so arbitrary it seems like a thing that yeah. you, what do you how what do you well, suggest just have a life like you know look up interesting documentaries take mm. up an interesting ho- hobby whether right. it's you know like sky I, ju- I just started to learn paragliding and okay. it's the coolest thing right I just decided I want to do paragliding Right, right. What I'm saying is, it's it's a person who is interested in authentic and has a life, right. and the confidence comes from, you know, like owning that. Yeah. Be, you know, so so there is no desperation. It's not about picking up. It's right. about here I am, and, and you I'm, like and me. You this really, is you really should 
yeah. Um, you really should get into this. This you is should, really good for you. Exactly. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. again, like th this is something, I have something to offer. You're going right. to, you know, learn and have a good time with me. Right. And, and again, and if, uh, if she is not interested, you know, so what? There's plenty more yeah. and there's something better for me. And it's better because I'm an interesting person. I'm a person with interests, right. with goals, passions. And I think that's also a, a situation where you, you, like you're talking about power gliding and you're talking about, you, you, you know, the things that you've done in your family and the, all the things that you've done you there's an air of the fact that you understand what your value is and i think a lot of times exactly. what what people don't understand is how you meet somebody how do they know what your value is you tell them right now you don't say well i'm worth this and i'm this and i but your who you are it seeps through every your confidence and and your value seeps through everything that you do mm. And that becomes evident to them because your community, the subtext is that you're communicating these things. Right. And it comes, I think the sense of value comes from a sense of self-efficacy. When you set out goals and accomplish them, whether it could be anything, it could be learning another foreign language, you could learn to play tennis. I did, you I could, did salsa you know, for three years. I, took, I wanted exactly. to learn salsa. I wanted to learn tango. I took the classes. I, yeah. And I tell know. people, go out. You know what? Do something that you would not normally do. Go right. out of your comfort yeah. zone yes. and then learn yeah. it. Like you said, salsa, whatever. So you expand it is. your comfort zone. You expand yeah. your comfort zone yeah. and you expand yourself of self efficacy. And so that's the kind of person. So you, you have you, to work on yourself before first. somebody's interested in you. In, so it's exactly. you got to be interesting in order for people to be interested. Interesting. In you. That's precisely what yeah. I say. Be an interesting person for people to be interested long term. Like again, anybody could, you know, could trick someone or could, you know. Could you get lucky. You could get, get lucky, lucky if you were like dating is a numbers say, game. So if you're out every night, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's yeah. there's always somebody. But can you maintain a relationship? Yeah. Can you be? Can can a woman feel that you could be her rock? Right. right. You could be. Yeah. She, so I again, I came to know you from uh, the Opie and Anthony show and stuff. And yeah. there is a, a clip that's gone viral. Your I think the most famous interaction was the one you had with Patrice, <laughs> yeah. who obviously Dante did the show with back yeah. in yeah, the yeah. day. And I well, think this show is an, I don't know if you know that this is a, an extension of the show that we did on that him and I did on yeah. the. That's on, what I heard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it might have been I think because of that appearance, or I think that was like the pinnacle of before him doing the show of like yeah, him yeah. discussing dating because it was a, and it was a very interesting debate because I just re-listened to it, but I wanted to get your perspective on that or what what it was like talking to well, remember, Patrice I, in I've that always, moment. Um, I've, I've never been afraid to take on, yeah. you know, a difficult conversation or, you know, uh, and I believe that ultimately you can, you can get anybody, you can connect with anyone. And I've been on Stern many times. I'm, yeah. I was his firm favorite playmate for a long time. I had the Howard 100. Uh, I had my own radio show on Howard 100 called The Sex Connection. So uh, with a bunch of comics. So I've always been comfortable. And of course, Patrice, I, you know, he came across his whole statement was, you know, because I was promoting a book at that time, How yeah. to Pick Up Hot Women. And yeah. my thing was, again, like what I'm talking about, be, you know, be interesting, be a good conversationalist, practice conversational skills and so forth. He, his whole thing was like a fish cannot tell a fisherman how to fish. Right. So his thing was like, well, a woman can't really tell a guy because she can't understand his perspective and so that's where sort of our, we had the divergent opinion I yeah. was like no a woman well, can't you, tell I'm going to tell you something I don't disagree with that but the reason why that is and, and I've always had the uh, I've always had the, the my perspective was always really different because I didn't I didn't I wasn't the ugly duckling who figured out the the, the clue and then execute it where I was able to get laid. Like, I was kind of always able to, to get women, and then I was a stripper and a fat, frat, I was a frat boy in mm -hmm. college. And, and so, but what, what's interesting is I, I agree with that. I, I, the, the, the terminology I lose, if you want to learn how to, to, how, to, how to hunt a deer, you don't ask the deer, you ask the hunter. But the perspective of it is, the different perspective is that that is really because in, in most cases, um, you don't have women who are really immersing themselves into uh, into understanding that. Because the truth is, if a deer could speak, and if it was a really smart deer, it could probably tell you, look, this is the tricks we use to avoid the right, hunters. Right, right, right. All right. But so it's it still, helps. It's still from their from perspective. perspective. Yeah. It's, but, it's but just, I, a, it helps. But if you have a, a, a woman that, uh, if you have a woman and she's a lesbian and she's, she's, 
like a whore and she's yeah, yeah. bagging like that she has a perspective on this as well as well exactly yeah. but the other thing is i don't i don't think that you can be you know a lot of times you know with with everything with like blm and and race and so on and so forth you you have to really immerse yourself in that to have an understanding understand, and you have yeah. to have the empathy to do that and i don't think that that is a i don't think that that's something that can't happen I, but i mean i i think you would agree with this at what point does a woman really immerse herself in that perspective unless she's really interested in right. it? Right, and that's the thing. As I, you know, remember, I only have PhD, which covered social psychology and in, in psychology of persuasion, psychology of seduction, which a lot of it goes into it. But also that I wrote a column for a penthouse, and so I had men write to me all the time, right. everything from penthouse letters to. Pen, so it was to, your job. So to it was my of, job right. to to listen and to learn to understand. And again, of course, it is a woman's perspective. And I interviewed other playmates and other pets, penthouse pets, and asked them what. And you would be surprised, like you know, some of them married their UPS drivers, right? And some of them married their webmasters. It wouldn't be you would think that every all these hot women married you know a billionaire and asked them out. Well, no, that, but that's well, there's only male, so that's, many people in Motley Crue. I mean, that's a four man band, <laughs> Doctor right, Z. You right. Know. But what I'm saying is that is that I what so I did do quite a bit of research for the book. But again, it is from a woman's perspective, yeah. mm. and ultimately, I don't know what it feels like to be a guy who has to approach this woman and who has to start a conversation. I I don't know. I know as as a like as someone who interviewed a, a number of women who told me this is what i liked about the guy and it's it was always like this calm confidence but it's also believe it or not a lot of them the, the men they slept with were not the men they married right. the men they married were it was a consistent story of someone who was there who was there for, through the hard times through was there consistently uh so the men that they hooked up with were completely different from the men they ended up settling down right, with. So right. again, those are two also separate things. Again, it depends on what your goal is. It the short term goal to, which is okay. I don't judge right, young, right. young people for wanting to be young. To, to, to what they call collect bodies. <laughs> yeah, As my yeah. teenage daughter says now, yeah. we're all about collecting bodies. How many bodies you have? Twenty. Yeah. Uh, I have thirty. So it's okay though. I don't judge that. That's if that's what they want. That's what. That, but that's goal is very short term goal is very different short term mating goal from a long term goal. Goal. Well, I I also find that like so, like I was a male stripper for ten years, and I had a I had a crew of guys that I like had a whole, uh, uh, like a we had a whole group that we we had. Sure, yeah. And did you dance at the cave by any chance in Philadelphia? I I, I did do the cave, yeah, yeah. and I actually got re I got recruited for mm. for uh, Chippendales. for Chippendales, Chippendales but I say. turned them down because at the time it was very racially charged. Oh, and interesting. If you, you didn't want to be the Jackie Robinson of well, Chippendales, well, it, they didn't want me to be the Jackie Robinson. They just wanted me to do the opening routines, like that. So I was doing. Wait, what does that mean? So like you have opening routines, and then you have you have feature then there's acts. There's a Chippendale, yeah. So you, they've never had a black. Feature, member of like the actual a Chippendale. main feature act. Yeah. So and and this was just you know the, this is the country. This is where where they were at you know racially. Yeah. And so I was making so much I money. Love the on idea, my, like even a fucking male oh, even yeah, shaking you, your dick. There's yeah, a just, fucking line that can't be. We and can't we have, have the dicks. We can't we have the these dicks. these black men coming in here with them big old dicks yeah, and swinging. Was, this is but, America, damn it. But my, my you know <laughs> the, ridiculous the group just of guys ridiculous. Uh, like everybody had a body count. But everybody didn't learn from the body count. You right. know, do you know what I mean? And then what I found also was, moreover than not, when they got out of stripping, they were grossly insecure because of the confidence of them being able to... to they had no skills. Sure, yeah, they, they, had, skills. they didn't have the skills. So the way, I mean, in some ways, they're objectified, too. And I, sure. I did a lot of giveaways for Penthouse because as a... You know, uh, one of the editors, we gave away a lot of toys. Right. And I told uh, people all the time that I was shocked how badly women behaved. They did things oh. men would never be allowed to do oh, in a yeah. strip club. They oh, would yeah. grab men. They would grab the cogs. They, sure. I was crazy. I would be scratched. They would scratch. scratch yeah. I would get bit. Bit, yeah. I, I got And yet it was, it was okay. It was, it's kind oh, of yeah. a reverse discrimination oh, yeah. because uh, men were not allowed. They would be, you know, pussies if they spoke up against Dante, that. You had to leave the, stri the stage like Terry Funk in the yes. 70s with yes. people throwing I, garbage at oh, you they're, they're crazy they no, were like, I, I, I tell I told you this story before I, mean, I remember doing my doing my act and then going out on stage and I mean we're talking about we had rented this place out this huge banquet hall that they did weddings we had like 1200 women there 
And I'm on the stage and I'm handing my business cards out. This is how old it is because we actually had business, business cards, card. right? And um, I'm handing out the business cards and I'm, and they're pulling at my clothes. Oh, grabbing and I'm just, you know, I'm like, whatever. It's a bunch of women. Be, and they, I kind of fall on the stage. And when I fall on the stage, they they, claw you. they're on top of me. And I'm like, oh, it's ha ha ha. Then I go to get up. And I literally can't yeah. get up. Like, it, it, the yeah. magnitude of the women. Like Gulliver's Travel. Yeah. yeah. I, the, the bouncers had to pull me out. Yeah. But I've seen it. And, I, and, and some were not yeah, that the, comfortable. The bouncers pulled stuff. you out like Kevin Costner and the bodyguard. <laughs> Someone carried you off the stage. <laughs> and you sang, I will always love you. I'm holding on. But, and, and you know what? I used to give away. I hooked up with a, with a few male strippers. Mm -hmm. But they would not be the kind of guys that ever date. Right. You know, it was just like thrilling. I watched them. And they were actually... I remember one where identical twins and I was oh. like you know I've got to experience this this is like too good <laughs> yeah, right, right. so yeah so I did but yeah. again that's very different from I, the kind of I, my, I think my whole perspective was I was I was trying to understand the dynamic of it because understanding the dynamic is where you make your money if you understand sure. how women perceive attraction that's how you make the money if you don't you don't or even if you go on a surface level on the surface level of that, it perspectively, it's not the same. Um, I, I I remember me thinking. I, I always tell this story. There was a, there was a, a, a epic. You know how we have all these series shows now. Yeah, yeah. So there was a series called uh, Shaka Zulu mm -hmm. back in the days, and so there was this this uh, this Zulu chieftain, and he reclaims his his. Uh, mm -hmm his throne after he's thrown out because he's like an orphan and he walks in and the whole tribe opens up and he has his head dressed with feathers and he's cut up and he just struts in and he's a zebra and a lion's head and my my three sisters were very different in terms of what they liked as men um one liked the romantic guy one liked the cute guy one liked the guy with money they were very different yeah. when that guy walked back they uh, we were all watching it and they all were like mm. like there was this power and this control that he yeah. had that just was that was so universal for them and so even the level of like cologne right like i had a cologne that was very kind of fruity, fruity and yeah, yeah, yeah. like that and the music was drum based and so i was really kind of creating this this fantasy in their help that that was kind of triggered it was literally triggered from perspective for me looking at it from their perspective and what they would find attractive and so i literally like like i i had a, a song that i would play pretty pers like uh like it was very kind of like tribal exactly, like yeah, drum yeah. So and you have, so you were kind of tapping into the collective subconscious into the subconscious yes, it's, it's true. and they would hear the, like girls would be in the bathroom and they would hear she my song, song and they would, and they would just ah! And they were clear, but it was it was it was intentional, you know, for me yeah. to understand that. Oh yeah, I did, tapping into the archetypes. I talked yeah. in my book about the archetype, like the soldier hero archetype. Mm -hmm. Every woman is drawn to the hero, right, archetype. right. And so, like I remember with with with, with the cave, the male strippers, right. the, the soldiers would come out and right. they would like pretend they're falling, and every right. every you know that's the archetypal right, thing because right, right. every woman deep inside has that you know she's a nurse that's and she wants to, <laughs> she to wants save the, the dying the officer soldier. and the gentleman. Uh, yeah, the, 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 yeah. And then there was you know the the twins I ended up hooking up with. They did the whole gynecologist thing. I said, oh, this is hot. <laughs> <laughs> they had little doctors and they were pulling women up on the stage, putting them in the gynecological chairs. Yeah. Said, this is just too hot. Yeah. So yeah, women need context more, right? right? Yeah. So women, like I, I remember studying male and female fantasies, and they mm -hmm. said males fantasize in acts and parts, right? Right, an act and a hot part, great right. tit. Women fantas women, it's all about stories, story, and it's story. an ambience. They need the yeah. whole story. They and when you it. tell them the whole story, they will they. They yeah. fall into that. And they do. It, and so they love narratives. So yeah. I tell people that's why being interesting is important because you have to have a narrative, a coherent narrative of your life. Yeah. So behind, you're, that, that storyline, you know, women are drawn to the story. And how, how much is that, would you say that that's... Uh, because of the way our brains work differently when you talk about yeah it, and well again I, I mean a lot of it's found in evolutionary psychology right so for women there is a lot more at stake to pick the right partner right every Good time a, right. a woman would sleep with a guy there's all sorts of consequences yes. and the consequences last at a minimum of 18 years now right, right? right, right so right. Uh, so then women develop more strategies in discerning 
uh, you know, the kind of they became more discerning because there is more evolutionary cost to right, them than right. bearing a, a child and everything. So, yeah, so they wanted a man with a substance, with a story. It's it's interesting you say that when you say uh, you talk about evolutionary psychology. It's like it's only as of ten thousand years ago that we where paternity becomes in, in, exactly. in, in, in important simply because of the fact that we stopped we stopped hunting and, and gathering. Hunting, gathering. It's only and, an agricultural society. Right. It's an agricultural, became, when yeah. you start to set up posts and you say, exactly. this is my, my land, land yes. this is my resources, this is my woman yes. for my children. Children to with pass a, on, yeah. Whereas when everybody, I mean, there's a... There's it a, was um, a lot more, I mean, the hunter-gathering society was a lot more egalitarian, right. you know, because men needed women, women needed men. It yeah. wasn't, neither one could survive without the other. Somebody had to take care of the fire and to tend to the fire. And there's, a, there's a tribe in New Guinea where the where the, the belief system is that the the child is made up of the accumulation of sperm right and right. so she would she she'd fuck the strongest guy she'd fuck the smartest guy she'd fuck the funniest guy to, to make this baby, baby because yeah, yeah. her perception is of all of these characters would well the thing is like the reason why women cheat is still and to that day is this whole thing of paternity confusion which is back in the evolutionary days men had no ways I mean back in our ancestors right. men had no ways of knowing the paternity so pater so women would have multiple you know sexual partners because paternity confusion helped them receive resources so more men would protect their offsprings and more men would uh, contribute to to the rearing and so forth because they suspected maybe this might be aging my child. Wow. So That's paternity a, confusion is a big reason. A resource it's extraction. It's an evolutionary. It's an evolu evolutionary. Evolu yeah. Well, socially, as evolutionary or, or genetically. Well, it's more, more, well, evolutionary is something that's more genetic. Yeah. But, but obviously, that's how ma female brain formed, right? So, right. so the women who had uh, sex with more partners received more food, Resources. more protection. And so their, their genes were passed on. Yeah. So that so women had different reasons for infidelity than men. That's such an interesting thing when you, when they when you have the the perspective of religion and how and how this idea of this absolute morality has nothing to do with this absolute morality and and and, and yeah. people are you know there's this I mean, ultimately we were formed by survival and right. so a lot of our strategies is still about survival. about survival and so i tell you know so men have to you want you know women want an evolved male right. so they don't want a complete neanderthal they want an evolved male with a touch of neanderthal right, 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 at right, the right, right time right. so i tell you know i tell guys yes she wants you to she she wants what's called a sensitive but caring brute. Right, right. Who's gonna right. overpower her it's but a using man in a suit. <laughs> right. By using just the right amount of yeah, force. Yeah, yeah. You know. Uh, so it's we, that's yeah. we're gonna we wanna shut this down and we're gonna do uh and some more can stuff. Can you on hang the out oh, like a course. Just for the, yeah, yeah. Um, fascinating just, conversation. I'd love you to um plug whatever you want to plug and then we're oh, gonna yeah so the easiest ways to find me is at, at uh, my instagram legendary playmate because i kind of everything's connected and you can contact me there so legendary playmate and i have tiktok and i have my books i have lots of stuff out there but it's probably the easiest way is legendary playmate and i have my only fans okay uh which you can ask me questions there and see all my deepest desires there okay. so. all right cool Harry, talk to me. Uh, you can go to my stuff, at Harry Turjanian. That's where all my <coughs> info is. Uh, so find all my stuff. My YouTube page, I just posted up some uh, comedy clips and uh, my wrestling demo over on my YouTube page. That's fun to check out. And more importantly, just find us at uh, Manschool202, uh, patreon.com slash Manschool202, and follow us there where we're doing the bonus content. We're going to gear up and do some more stuff as well, including talking to the great Dr. Z. Yeah. Um, about all sorts of great I stuff. Didn't even we haven't played this in a while. I had that in the background. Yeah. All right. Well, um, just uh, everything for me, Dante Nero. Google me, bitch. Um, <laughs> That's uh, what I always say. Just Google me. Uh, you know, don't forget the Patreon. Please support us on the Patreon because that finances our ability to keep doing this, yeah. man, and keep bringing this content to you. Uh, GYBB, get your pulse back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The Sexual Revolution is being podcast. And I love y'all. Please uh, check us out on the Patreon. I'm signed up for the Patreon, and you, we're, con we're going to continue this conversation behind the scenes. Uh, check that out for the Patreon, Man School 202. We are out. <laughs>